Hey guys, welcome back to the channel and in today's video, we are going to cover cube cost, which is basically an open source tool that helps you monitor and manage cost and capacity in your Kubernetes cluster. So I'm going to show you how you can basically provision cube cost on your Kubernetes cluster and monitor your costs related to namespace. In fact, cube cost gives you a lot of insights on the cost when it is running on your cluster. So we'll see all that. Uh, here I'm on the cube cost documentation. So you can see it says cube cost helps you monitor and manage cost and capacity in Kubernetes environment, blah, blah, blah. You can see there are two versions of cube cost, cube cost free and cube cost enterprise. So we are going to work with cube cost free uh, because there are a lot of features which are available on the free version itself. So you don't need to, I mean, unless you are uh, using it at an enterprise level. And if you're just, I mean, you don't need a cube cost enterprise license. If you're just working on your own private cluster or on your own project, cube cost free gives you enough uh, information, enough insights on the cost. All right. So let's just quickly go to installation and come on. And it's a, basically a simple helm installation that you can do, right? So let's get started. So I have a cluster from Kilakoda that is running Kubernetes 1.29. Uh, we'll just copy this command. You can see it is a Helm chart, which is basically coming from this repo, cost analyzer, and it will create a namespace called kubecost also, right? So let's just quickly copy this command and paste it and run it. So this will take like a couple of minutes and in fact less. So if you just do kubectl get pods in the cube cost namespace, you can see we have few pods which are coming up. So we'll just wait for these pods to be in running state. All right, so my pods are now in running state. Uh, we'll just go back to the documentation again and we'll just read like after installing cube cost, following guide will help you with detailed steps and to complete the configuration. So if you want like some custom configuration that you want to include, you can basically pull this uh, Helm chart on your local system. Or if you have a centralized repo, you can pull this uh, Helm chart, configure the values.yaml file and deploy it with some custom settings, right? Like for networking costs. So networking cost is def uh, by default is disabled. So if you have to enable the networking costs, you have to modify the values.yaml. So that's one thing, but there are other configurations as well, which are part of the values.yaml file. All right. So this is actually important integrate with your cloud provider. So you can see that it says that cube cost by default detects like where you are running it. So I suppose if you're running or running it on EKS or AKS in Azure, EKS on AWS or GCP. So it is going to pull the pricing. It will is basically going to use the pricing API of that particular CSP, the cloud service provider, and it is going to calculate cost based on that. But most of the organizations at enterprise level have different discounts which are implied which are applied right and those discounts cube cost is not aware of so if you want the actual cost to be calculated with the discount and everything then you have to integrate your csp your cloud service provider with cube cost and then they have the whole process of doing that so you can just follow this guide and integrate the csp with cube cost so that you can get actual cost uh, there's a bunch of information. Uh, the one I'm looking for is how to explore the cube cost functionality through UI. So there is a command which it gives, right? So let's just copy this command and come back to a cluster. Uh, let me clear the... Uh, and I think namespace is cube cost, which is missing over here. And also one thing since we are using killer coda, I need to pass address. All right. So now we can go to traffics and ports. You can see it says service needs to run all interface right now. Just type 1990 and access. And you can see this is how the cube cost dashboards looks like. Just yeah. 
and it gives you so this is just an overview so since i've just added it on the killer coda cluster that probably that is why there's not much information available but if you run it on your own enterprise cluster or your own uh, playground or wherever you are running your uh, cluster basically so probably you will see a lot of other informations like total kubernetes cost total cost right you can view the reports my possible monthly savings so it also has some suggestions that you can imply that you can apply to basically make some savings uh, if you come to monitor you will see that there are two apis basically allocation and assets allocation is basically going to give you an overview of the cost per namespace like there will be the list of namespaces and how much they are costing like the memory the cpu it will be a very bifurcated uh, cost distribution or basically cost attribution and then in fact you can go inside each namespace and see how much each pod or each process is costing you so you can get to that granularity that you are able to see how much each process is costing you right and assets is basically uh, gives you the overview of i think uh, the cluster resources right so the storage and everything so that's what i think they have in the documentation what assets api cover uh, no, 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 no. let me just find it if i can find it mm, q cost api directory multi cluster allocation api assets api retrieves the backing cost data broken by individual kubernetes assets yeah so you can see node disk etc all that is covered in the assets section so there are like bunch of things here i think this is a new version so you have like a few more thing network and everything and you have reports which you can basically generate if you can just so you can create a report based on like if you want to create an allocation report or an asset report right savings is where it suggests like how much money you can save and then it is going to make you some suggestion like right size your cluster nodes right size your container request reserved instances and a lot of things there like manage underutilized nodes stuff like that and in fact there is an action i think this is something new that has been added into the new version so <clears throat> Kubeco action is one stop shop managing all automated jobs that the cube cost executes for you this page okay i think this is something like it is going to apply those scheduled action or maybe you can like set up some scheduled actions let's see cluster turn down request sizing okay so this is something new i think that has been added i am not not much familiar with this so but yeah and then there are alerts so you can actually send create alerts based on the cost and you can send those alerts to a slack channel a micro team microsoft teams webhook and then you have like what is the subject of the alert recipients in fact it can also send you an email like so there is a bunch of thing that has been added uh, recently i believe in the latest probably the latest version but this is how the cube costs you can see like it is trying to get some data but currently it is not because i'm running it on a cluster which basically does not has much to offer but uh, if you run it on your enterprise enterprise cl uh, cluster or your own cluster which has some resources some jobs some pods which are running and costing you probably you'll see a lot of data and i think yeah that's it for this video i think you got how basically you set up a cube cost this is very simple there is a slack community for cube cost you can join that and if you have any uh, issues any problems any questions you can ask in that community and the, the there is basically help from the cube cost guys directly so that is a good thing you can you should join that slack community i am the part of that slack community so if in any case i run in in any issues with cube cost i simply raise a request over there and the response time is a little slow but you get the response all right so yeah that's pretty much it for this video guys i hope you guys like this video please do subscribe to the channel before leaving and thank you for watching